failed to come up with any actual metric for how exactly we'd go about doing that. What do you do with, for example, Barack Obama, whose father was black and not from the United States and therefore not having history with slavery, and a mother who is white? Would his family receive slavery reparations? How about Kamala Harris, whose, whose father is Jamaican and mother is Indian? Does she receive slavery reparations? From whom? Does she receive slavery reparations from me? My great-grandparents got here in 1907, long after slavery was over, and lived their entire lives in the North, where Jim Crow was not in effect. It's, it's almost impossible—I I think not almost. It is impossible to come up with a fair metric for recompensing slavery yeah. 10 generations after slavery's end. If you want— The unhinged left sinks even lower. Joshua Topolsky, co-founder of the tech website The Verge, has sparked an uproar after a vile attack against conservative commentator and writer Ben Shapiro, tweeting, quote, Ben Shapiro is the Jew who helps other Jews onto the train. Now, Topolsky has now deleted the tweet, but not because it's disgusting to compare Shapiro, who is Jewish, to a Nazi collaborator, uh, for other reasons. And in a follow-up, he tweeted, quote, I deleted it because uh, uh, a mob on the right of the right-wing babies who were flooding my, my mentions, and it was frankly pretty annoying, as were the DM death threats. Joining us now to respond is The Daily Wire's Ben Shapiro. Ben, we're always talking to you when the left is in uh, unhinged. And you have a special way of unhinging them. But this was really, I mean, I keep saying a new low, but this really is a new low. I've never heard of this person before, but I guess he's kind of big in the tech world. Where are we here? I mean, uh, I've been called worse by better, so. How are you? Um, yeah, nice to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. You know that you weren't registered or whatever for the group didn't register you for an event. They have strict things, so you're so you not allowed. allowed. Well, I mean, YAF did inform you that I was coming as a speaker, as a as a person sitting in the audience, as well as as a member of uh, Christina Hoff Summers' team. So uh, I'm not sure whether their standards are necessary. I'm also wondering exactly why it's so necessary to keep me personally out. We're just following protocols, sir. Uh, well, why is your protocol to keep me specifically out? What country protocol? Soviet Union or United States? Do you want to step over here and decide? Well, I'm, I'm happy to do it right here if, you, if you'd like. I mean, it doesn't I have to be private. The bottom line is it's private property, okay? That it, it wasn't well, we pop, proper procedures weren't followed, and you're not going to allow them. So am I to understand that if I take three steps forward, you will attempt to have me arrested? If you create a problem, then you will not you know, leave the campus, yes. Okay, so just to, be, just to be clear, if I attempt to enter that hall right there and sit down just to listen to somebody speak, or if I attempt to ask a question so, or to engage in free speech, you will have me arrested. At this point, yes, sir. Okay. I'm, I'm glad that we've uh, clarified that situation. I'm also glad that uh, in a city, I mean, clearly you have great security. I'm glad in a city that has uh, some 4,000 shootings to this date, you have 30 members of security just for a 59165 Jewish guy. <laughs> <laughs> just like maybe a mild allocation of resources. Tell me you are not looking out for them. Their safety is not your concern. acknowledge the reality, regardless of your, which end of the ideological spectrum you're on, that this idea that the relationship between uh, a corporation and a, a worker is an entirely voluntary one is a figment of our imagination. The reality is that the relationship depends upon the balance of power. Because if you were to really believe that it's to totally a voluntary relationship, then you should be arguing for child labor because that was legal at one time and that was argued as a beneficial thing for the economy. Yeah, but the fact is that the children are not capable of consent, which is why the legislation was appropriate from all ideological points of view. In terms of, in terms of whether the, basically this trickle up economics, this idea that if you pay people $15 an hour, it will help the general economy. It's, it's evidencing a, a differential point of view with regard to how money is invested and what makes your life as a consumer better. The truth is, the truth is that you know, Mother Teresa did less good for the world than Bill Gates as a general matter. 
because more people gained their jobs through Bill Gates, more people have a product that Bill Gates created, more people's lives have been bettered through Bill Gates. Mother Teresa did a lot of wonderful things, but the reality of the situation is that what makes your life better than people's lives were 50 years ago is all the new products and services developed by all the rich people who hire you. All of you out there who I'm sure are not rich, are you working for a poor person right now? Who is hiring you? Who's paying your salary? Unless you're working for the government, and even then you're not, paying, you're not working for a poor person, you're paying for the rich people who actually pay the taxes that pay for you to work for the government. So this idea that economic growth is a function of people making $15 an hour versus $14 an hour is simply not true. The, re the reality of the situation is that what makes the economy grow is new products and services that make your life better and which require millions of dollars in research and development. And as far as the point that was made about the salary of the CEO of Walmart, all I can say is this. See, the Walmart has approximately, they're the biggest employer in the country. They have something on the order of, of 2 million employees across the country. Let, let's say we agree that 20 million is too much. And let's say that we cut that salary to zero. Great, we just gave everybody 10 bucks. Right? For the year. So let's, let's stop pretending that the, the vast wealth imbalance inside Walmart is causing poverty for people at the bottom. If we can just trust the government, then why aren't we just trusting the government to do the right thing now? I don't understand why a piece of legislation makes them better at what they do. I mean, the government is not very good at what they're doing now. Why, did, why does new wording make them not suck? Because part of the reason... Completely and totally bipartisan, yet still, Republicans in the House won't even bring the bill to the floor for a vote. Richard, that I just tells have one you question. right there, Larry, that they don't agree with the pathway to citizenship. I why can't they vote? Uh, honestly, I have one question in all of this. Seriously, just one question. Why not just secure the border and then put a pathway to citizenship why in? Why can't those happen at the same time? Why don't you answer my question instead of asking me back why? I, I just explained to you why they can't. Uh, here's why they can't happen at the same time. As you secure the border, the border remains somewhat open. People cross the border because they feel that if they get in before the deadline, if they get in before the border is secure, then they are somehow included have in the pathway to the citizenship. We have what no do you think is happening? There's no law right now. But in oh, the that's Senate bill, law right we now. talk Got about it. we talk You're about right. there's no law against crossing the border illegally. We well, we haven't had an ATF director for the last ten years. We haven't, we haven't had an ATF director for the last ten years because the NRA won't even the NRA won't even allow us to have a surgeon general because because the guy uh, wanted common sense gun control. Well, the, the ATF is a little bit uh, busy smuggling guns south of the border to the drug cartels. Oh, come on. <laughs> problem that I have. I think that you can accept and tolerate people's behavior um, and that, you know, demonstrates non-homophobia. I think that it is ridiculous to suggest that just because you're not celebrating, you know, on the cover of Sports Illustrated, somebody coming out of the closet and you think, you know, it's relatively unimportant in the grand scheme of things because people should be able to live their lives the way that they want. I, I don't really understand. You know, there are folks who are saying that that was a homophobic tweet. I'm still confused as to how it's homophobic simply to say that you don't think it's a heroic move in today's America to come out of the closet the same way that it was maybe 20 years ago. On the gun control debate, they keep trotting out children as though we should be taking policy prescriptions from seven-year-olds. You know, it used to be in this country that when a president of the United States said, I'm dealing with this issue because, for example, my 13-year-old daughter cares about nuclear disarmament, we laughed them. We laughed at them. We laughed them out of the public sphere. Jimmy Carter comes to mind. When President Obama walks out there with a bunch of seven-year-olds and says, I'm doing it because these seven-year-olds, they care about gun control, Give me a break. I mean, if we're taking our policy prescriptions from kids who can't spell either policy or prescription, we have a problem. How do you say that some people don't have privilege when you basically just said that trans people aren't valid? They're not a thing. They're just girls pretending to be boys or boys pretending to be girls. Yeah. Okay. Like, okay oh, someone's excited. Okay. Biological, but gender is a completely different thing. No, gender is not disconnected from sex. So. It's not completely disconnected, but it's still a cultural thing. It's still from society. It's okay. No, it is not in the mind, okay? You're not a man if you think you're a man. And I didn't say pretending, or if I did, I shouldn't have said pretending. Let me amend. You said playing. Okay, I said a boy who thinks he's a girl. That's the usual phraseology I use. Not playing. I usually say a boy who thinks he's a girl or a girl who thinks he's a boy, which is technically what we're talking about here. As far as the actual psychological issues at play, it used to be called gender dysphoria or gender identity disorder. Now they call it gender dysphoria. The idea that, that sex or gender are malleable is not true, okay? And I'm not denying your humanity if you are a transgender person. I am saying that you are not the sex to which you claim to be. You're still a human being, and you're a human being with an issue that I'm, you know, I wish you Godspeed in, in dealing with in whatever way you see fit. But if you are going to dictate to me that I'm supposed to pretend, I'm supposed to pretend that men are women and women are men, no. My answer is no. I'm not going to, I'm not going to modify basic biology because it threatens your subjective sense of what you are. Okay, but you're still saying these kids should like not be accepted because they don't really fit in either place. They can't just like I'm saying that the Boy Scouts have a standard. You must be a biological boy to be a Boy Scout. You have to be a boy to be a Boy Scout. Is that written though? 
Thank in the name so Boy Scouts. <laughs> because because it, because this is because this is a, a very okay, for, because for all of human history, boy meant boy and girl meant girl. Boy did not mean girl. And if I call you a moose, are you suddenly a moose? Okay, if I redefine our terms. No, it's a, yes, that's right. Men and women are a completely different thing. This is true. Have you ever met a man or a woman? They're completely different. It's not a thing. It's genders. It's not saying you're Okay, why, why is that? I don't understand. Why? Okay, let me ask you this. How, okay, I won't ask you how old. I will ask you how old you are, okay? Because you're young enough that it's probably not insulting to ask you. So, I'm 22, so I'm probably only naive, right? No, why aren't you 60? Why aren't you 60? <laughs> and why, why can't you identify as 60? Why, what, what is the problem with you identifying as 60? <laughs> You're right. Age is significantly less important than gender. You can't magically change your gender. You can't magically change your sex. You can't magically change your age. You can still legally change it. People will recognize you. can't legally change your age, by the way. <laughs> Obviously. You can change your name, you can change your sex, you can change your identity. Just because you can do things legally doesn't mean that they are correct biologically. You could do lots of things in the past that were incorrect biologically and incorrect legally. For a long period of time in the United States, sterilization of the mentally ill took place. That didn't make it okay. Skinner versus Oklahoma. Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes wrote the decision. Right. I still don't understand how you would be it's not a matter of open-minded and accepting. I want them to get treatment that they see fit, but that's not involving me. The, the idea behind the, the transgender movement as a civil rights movement is the idea that all of their problems would just go away if I would pretend that they were the sex to which they claim, uh, to which they claim membership. That's nonsense. The transgender suicide rate is 40%. It is 40%. And according to, the, according to the Anderson School at UCLA, it makes no difference. They, there's a study that came out last year. It makes no difference, virtually no difference, statistically speaking, as to whether people recognize you as a transgender person or not. My wife is a doctor, okay, which means she's accomplished more in her short life than Hillary Clinton has in her entire life. My wife is a doctor who takes care of people. She never at any point in her life sat around thinking, you know what, I can't be a doctor until Hillary Clinton, a corrupt old shrew, becomes a presidential nominee. Let me tell you something about safe spaces. There's only one group of people, one group of people, who want safe spaces that are race specific. There are only one group of people that want safe spaces so that they never have to hear from anybody of a different ideology or political persuasion. Those people are called fascists. Okay, and you've got a bunch of fascists, damn fascists on this campus, who are trying to shut down political debate and trying to cloister themselves in this little cocoon of stupidity so they don't have to debate anyone or think about issues outside their kin so that they can feel comfortable. Guess what? Life isn't about feeling comfortable. Life is about bettering yourself. Get off your stupid pansy. Uh, the reason is this. The basic premise of socialism is, I'm here, I'm breathing, give me crap. <laughs> right? I, I have an, you have an obligation to care for me. I have a right to health care. I can force that doctor to go to medical school, expend $200,000, spend her entire life learning medicine, and then I can walk into her house and force her to provide me medicine. Right? Capitalism, by nature, is the opposite. Capitalism is the idea that I will starve unless I give you a good or a service that you want. When you say money in politics is bad, again I ask you, Buddy Romer gave you $4 million to start TYT. What did he expect in return? Should he not have given you money? Was the money not speech? It was just money after all. It was just like a hooker, I assume. So are you the prostitute? How did this work? When you take money from Al Jazeera, okay. does that make you a hooker so for the Qataris? How does that awesome, work? Can I, that was an awesome conflation. Explain, if it has nothing to do with culture, explain to me why the single motherhood rate in the black community jumped from 20% to 70% in the same course of time that the civil rights movement has made such tremendous strides. Is America more racist now than it was in 1960? And if it is, please explain to me how that happened. When it comes to human nature, the left doesn't believe that human beings are capable of great good or great evil. The left believes that if human beings are flawed, that's because the system is flawed. The system has made people bad. Right, this is what Marxism suggests. Marxism suggests that you're all widgets and you're just a product of the evil capitalist system. So if you do something bad, then that's because capitalism made you that way. The free markets made you that way. Freedom made you that way. Thus, we have to overthrow it and build a fairer world. Human beings are bad because of Western civilization, which is evil and was founded in racism and sexism and bigotry. Western civilization, you hear very often, is founded irredeemably on white supremacy. The reason that you have bad people, the reason you have individual races, is because society broadly is racist. America is founded on this racism. 
And that white supremacy, that's what causes crime and poverty and inequality, not the fact that human beings do good things and do bad things, not the fact that some human beings commit crime. No, the society at large is responsible for that because if society were perfect, if you had a utopia, that would change the nature of human beings. I don't think that border security and a pathway to citizenship are mutually exclusive. Those two things can happen simultaneously at the same time. Why? And that is the compromise. That is, that is the place of compromise Why for Democrats and Republican, Larry. They can happen at the same time. We can build a fence. We can build a wall. We can build electric fence if that's what they want. But at the same time, we need to provide a pathway to citizenship for those 11 millions that are in the shadows. The Republican Party's problem is, is they can cannot get a pathway through citizenship out of the United States House of Representatives, whether they like it or not, whether we beefed up the border or not, whether we put uh, not Marine, Marine Team 6 on the border, they would still not be able to pass a pathway to citizenship. That's simply not true. If you secured the border, people that would pass true. a pathway Let's to citizenship. Count the votes. I promise you, I know the Republican Party pretty well. And, and if, you, if you were to secure the border, then you would be able to pass a pathway to citizenship. You would. It's, well, it, why it, can't those happen? Why, why are those two things mutually exclusive? Why are they connected? Because if we're dealing with immigration, we're dealing with immigration as a total issue. They're not separate issues. The, of course they're separate issues, because the fact is that if no, you do not... not. Okay, it's fine. It's all about you're maintaining right. Why... our border and having immigration control. So, 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 so you're right. Let's assume you're right. And, and we'll, completely, we'll completely connect them. Okay? But the way we'll connect them is we won't, we won't have any border security. Amnesty for everybody. Is there a problem or no? That's not what, but see, but, but this is this is this is where we, this is exactly where they go to, Larry. Every time we have this, this is where we say, go to. Why don't you explain why forever. they have to be and connected? That is not. Well, wait a second. Wait a second. That is not what's in the Senate bill. In the Senate bill, which is the Democratic solution, which has been endorsed by the President and all the Democrats in the United States Senate, that bill strengthens our border. It increases border security, and at the same time, it provides a very, very, very long pathway to citizenship that takes almost ten years. It is completely and totally bipartisan. Yet still, Republicans in the House won't even bring the bill to the floor for a vote. Richard, Why I can't they vote? Honestly, I have one question in all of this. Seriously, just one question. Why not just secure the border and then put a pathway to citizenship why in? Why can't those happen at the same time? Why don't you answer my question instead of asking me back why? I, I just explained to you why they can't. Here's why they can't happen at the same time. As you secure the border, the border remains somewhat open. People cross the border because they feel that if they get in before the deadline, if they get in before the border is secure, then they are somehow included have in the pathway the to citizenship. Bill? Of course I've read the bill. And not only have I read the well, bill, the I've been bill, watching what's happening on the, the border with tens of thousands of children the crossing the, the border in anticipation of amnesty. Wait, because we have no, what do you think is happening? there's no law right now. But in oh, the Senate no bill, law right we now. talk Got about it. we talk about You're right. There's no law against crossing the border illegally. We in the Senate bill we talk about who qualifies for a pathway to citizenship, and those deadlines do not do not apply to those individuals across the border. And how tomorrow, are you going to magically determine that, Richard? Today. Do they have a magical like? It's do they in have the a bill. Right, they have a, read the bill. I've read the bill, Richard. Can you explain to me well, when you, you haven't read it correctly? When you determine when you determine who has crossed the border when I was unaware that everybody who crosses the border has a no. barcode. Being transgender. Gender is it's about the bravest thing you can do. Does with she deserve the award? Yes. Why are we mainstreaming delusion? Uh, it's not delusion. Why, why would delusion. you call it delusion? Because Bruce Caitlyn Jenner, I'll call him Caitlyn Jenner. No, because it's that's her. The, You're not being polite to the pronoun. Because disrespectful. It, okay, forget about the disrespect. Facts don't care about your feelings. It turns out that every chromosome, every cell in Caitlyn Jenner's body is male with the exception of some of his sperm cells. So you don't know what you're talking about. You're not educated on genetics. Would you to discuss the genetics or no? Well, no, what no. are your genetics? I, I, so I'd stay away from the genetics and back to the brain scans. You cut that out now or you'll go home in an ambulance. Yeah, that seems mildly inappropriate for a political discussion. No, I know. Well, yeah. but wait, to be fair, but to be, you, but to be fair, wait, but to be fair, you are, but, but to be fair, you're actually being hey guys. rude. You're and that, no, no, no. And that's no, no, not no. fair. I'm sorry. It's not rude to say that someone who is biologically a male sir. is a male. You just Someone who is biologically sir. male is a male. Do I seem like a physical threat to anybody? The last time I was in a fight, I was 14 years old. I was two years younger than everybody else in my high school class, and I was getting my ass kicked about what happened in San Diego. How dare you accuse me of standing on the graves of the children that died there? How dare you? I've seen you do it repeatedly, Pierce. Like I say, how dare you? I mean, you can keep saying that, but you've done it repeatedly. What you do, and I've seen you do it on, on the program, is you keep saying to folks that if they disagree with you politically, then somehow this is a violation of, of what happened in Sandy Hook. And you have yet, I, I, I'd really like to hear your policy prescriptions for what we should do about guns. Because you say that you respect the Second Amendment, and you yeah. know, I brought this here for you so that you can read it. It's the Constitution. And I, I would really like for you to explain to me what you would do about guns that would have prevented what happened in Sandy Hook. I don't. I reject state socialism personally. What I'm referring to is specifically, for example, the term given to worker cooperatives. The most prominent example, the Mondragon Corporation in Spain, owned the the. Uh, there is no 
investor or cap like capitalist group that pro owns the profits. When the company turns a profit, that profit is distributed among the workers, some 80,000 employees. It's a wildly successful corporation. I mean, is it a voluntary association? Is there any cram down happening? No, there's not. Then good, but it's capitalist. That's not, that's not, that's not socialist. It's not.